thank you for taking the time to click on today's video. I know that for most of us, money is money. But the reality is, is that as we get closer to retirement, it pays to be objective about our money. In other words, it pays to take time to consider all the various kinds of money that we have, whether it's pre-tax 401k money, or it's tax-free Roth money, or it's the money that's kind of in the middle, the, the post-tax money, the money that we've earned, we paid the taxes on, and now it's tax-free principal. But nevertheless, as we get closer to retirement and we start thinking objectively about what our plans are when we retire and what we want to do and what our, what our goals are, the reality is, is that we have to look objectively at our money and determine its primary purpose. Determining a primary purpose behind the kind of money and the account that you have money in is going to help you make wiser decisions with regards to how you invest that money. So let's use it as an example. Let's say that you've got a million dollars sitting in a 401k. We want to be able to identify what is the primary purpose of that money. Is that money number one primary purposefully being set aside for a lump sum withdrawal? In other words, you retire and your goal is to be able to buy a place in Phoenix, Arizona, buy that piece of real estate without any debt, just take a huge chunk of money out of that 401k and buy the property. That very well could be the case. The problem is, is that many people find the issue as soon as they make the withdrawal. And that's the tax man. You see, all of the money that's sitting in that 401k or that 403b or that 457 plan, even a traditional IRA, is going to be all taxable money. So is that lump sum goal really the best for that particular kind of money? Number two could be legacy. Well, I've worked really hard, Matthew. I've saved all of this money so that we could pass it on to the kids. Now, again, if we're talking money that is post-tax money, if we're talking money that is tax-free Roth, that could be a wonderful objective for that kind of money because we know that when we die, if we have post-tax money sitting in a brokerage account, there's going to be, as of right now, a step up in cost basis. That means that we could buy $100,000 worth of stocks that have turned into $300,000. And when we die, our children are going to receive $300,000 without any taxation. Roth money. Obviously, it's tax-free to us. It's tax-free to them. But is pre-tax money in a 403b or 401k really the best suited to pass on as a legacy? Now, I know that we all want to give legacy to our children, but think about it. You're passing on a pre-tax dollar. This means that your children, your grandchildren, are only going to receive a fraction of what you actually have in that account because if you don't pay the taxes on it, somebody will. And that's going to be them. What about the third purpose? The third purpose being retirement income. You see, when we think about all the hard work that we've completed over the course of our working lives, we think about all the things that we've had to endure, all the sacrifices we've had to make to earn this money. The idea behind saving all of this money is so that when we retire, we could actually have the retirement of our dreams. We can actually take the trips. We can spend the time doing the things that we want to do. So we need to look at our money objectively and figure out what is the primary purpose of this money? And is this particular type of money absolutely going to be best fitted with the kind of money that I'm working with. Now, you might think that that's the end of it, being able to identify the objective and problem over. The second thing, however, that I encourage my clients to think about is the kind of risk. You see, as we get older, we tend to become more conservative. As we get older, we tend to be running out of time. And what we know as we age is that we don't have the opportunity, we don't have the flexibility or the luxury of being able to endure the kind of loss and the kind of retracement that we could when we were in our 30s and 40s. And so this is where I get really precise with individuals. I say, so let's say you've got that million dollars in that 401k. Is it acceptable when you're in retirement to lose 50% of that money. Now, for most individuals, they're like, well, I wouldn't like it, but I'd, I'd live with it. Really? Let's not blow smoke up our own bum. The reality is, is that as we age, we know that our money becomes more precious because we become dependent upon our, our, on our money. We no longer have the, the security of a paycheck. And so if we don't like risk and we know that not only once but twice in, say, since the turn of the century, we have seen our markets lose 50%. If it's happened once, if it's happened twice, 
you finish the phrase. So the second one is, is it acceptable if you lost 25%? If you had that million dollars and you woke up tomorrow and you would lost $250,000, would that be acceptable to you? Now this is where it starts to get a little bit gray. Individuals are like, well, I wouldn't like it, but I, I think I could tolerate it. Like really honestly, I, th I think I could tolerate it. Okay, well, let's ask the question with regards to the primary purpose. If losing a fourth of the money is okay with you, is it going to have an impact on the purpose of the money? Do you see where these two things correlate? The reality is, is that these two things are working together. If I want a lump sum, well, guess what? My money has to be there. That means I can't be taking a 50% risk with my money. If I want a legacy, I can't be risking this money to a 50% risk because after all, this money is designed for legacy. If I want retirement income, I don't want to be focusing on growth-based stocks. I want to be focusing, focusing on income-producing instruments. Do you see how these two things work together? So I encourage you, as you think about your money, as you get closer and closer to retirement, identify what the primary purpose of that account is, that type of money that you have, and then identify what kind of risk you have. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I don't know what kind of risk I have. I think I know, but I don't know. Well, the reality is, is that if you're working with a good quality fiduciary, an advisor that does this for a living, an advisor that focuses on helping people retire successfully. It's as simple as giving them a phone call because our job is to be able to do risk assessments on portfolios. Not us just, you know, leisurely looking through and saying, well, this looks like a pretty aggressive portfolio or looking at a category that has been assigned to your portfolio, but rather looking at the actual holdings, the actual instruments and running it through software that's going to identify what that potential probability of risk would be in the event we had another financial crisis. Why do we do this? Because it's always best to know in advance the risk that you're taking on your money before you actually come into that risk. Well, I hope this video has been helpful. I encourage you, if you like our little videos, give us a thumbs up, share this with your friends, get them stimulated to be thinking about their money. And if we've earned your subscription, I ask you to click that little subscribe button. We'll remind you every time we have a weekly video, if you hit that little bell. And until next time, make it a great day.